Well, I guess good morning. At least in Denmark, it's pretty nice outside. Um, 7.38. But anyway, uh, I found this article and I was reading it and I took one quote after another and posted it on Facebook, which I really should stop using and begin to maybe use at, le at least use both, you know, in regards of gap.com. Uh, gap.com is, uh, you know, focusing on freedom of speech and all that and uh, has been banned by many, you know, sources out there. So, but anyway, it doesn't have advertising and all that, um, but hopefully it will, you know, I, I still need to to try it out more. It seems to be a pretty nice alternative to Facebook. Um, anyway, the saints protested against the poops uh, long before the Protestant Reformation. And this is an article um, that I actually found, you know, that's one quote after another that is actually, I think, pretty good. So I wanted to read it, you know, instead of just, uh, instead of just sitting and copying and pasting, I'm reading it anyway, right? So the Roman Catholic belief study shows the saints were protesting against the poops of Rome long before the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. Uh, some Catholics proclaim that the protest against the poops started with the Protestant Reformation and that the Protestant churches aren't legitimate because they came after the Roman Catholic or uh, Roman Church, uh, and actually, I have on Gabe, for example. Um, as we go back, I'm still pretty new to it, but the idea is that um, I need another picture. But that was just a test picture, pretty much. Uh, had problems fixing the picture, but with replies, I think. Do we have, no? I guess I need to get into the home thing. Oh, that's actually a good question how I actually find that. Um, I would think that... Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, so it should be... Uh, mm, hang boost. Yeah, so you can see people boosting you. It, apparently it works like Twitter and all that. Um, and it seems like there's pretty good activity actually on the platform. So I think if I actually moved over there um, more um, and set up my profile as it should and all that, I think I could actually get a good amount of activity on going uh, compared to Facebook, which I pretty much have near to zero. What was that? One of that was a Catholic. Uh, oh, I think. That was a Catholic saying something in regards of Protestants um, in some point. It should be here somewhere. Um, oh, why did I actually put my pen? Um, I should have found it before, I guess. That's a good question. But anyway, that was a Catholic that wrote... Maybe he has deleted it. I don't know. Um, oh, maybe. Yeah, here we go, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this uh, church militant army of God and all that, probably a Catholic. Uh, tell me, so-called friend. Uh, whatever, you know, people always start out with something when they end up uh, getting into... Uh, my anyway, so the name of any Protestant church, uh, the name of any Protestant church in the first fifteen hundred years since Christ. How about a pastor? Any artwork or mention of any Protestant church or pastor before the man Martin Luther? If Jesus and the apostles taught Protestant theology, theology, how did the Catholic Church come into existence? And to that end. The Bible was canonized in the 14th century by the Catholic Church? Question mark. If Jesus and the apostles taught Protestant theology, why would they allow the poof out of thin air? Uh, Catholic Church decide what constitutes the Word of God. For 1100 years before the man, Martin Luther, changed it. So please study history and remove the scales. When Mohammedans were destroying Christian lands who gathered to fight them? Question mark. The Catholic Church. So here we actually have just one of these... Um, we're confirming that, yeah, the Catholic Church was in regards to the Crusades, you know. Um, crusades against the Christians, Crusades against the Mohammedans, you know, whatever. Just, you know, destroying people by the sword of the hand. Was that, was, 
did Jesus tell us to do that now? Anyway, where are all where were all the Baptists, non denominations and so on, since Jesus and the apostles were all Protestants? Question mark. When the Great Schism happened, it wasn't Baptist and later day saints that split, it was the Catholic Church, East and West. Please, sir, study history and remove the scales. And I responded, of course, to that. I do wonder if I can just put to push it and then get to the point where I responded. Uh, let's see here. That's uh, right here. Maybe I should make a video as a reply. And actually, I should only have responded to this guy, but still new to it. Uh oh. Um, so what did I do? Uh, let's go a little back here. There we, okay, there we go. Um, it's very responsive and it works pretty good. Um, this uh, gap.com. Uh, uh, and I mentioned in regards of the church militant army of God, he wanted some, some group names and all that. The Nazarenes, the Waldensians, the Albigensians, the Lollots and the Hussites. There's some of them before Martin Luther. Um uh, Let's see here. And you should know the 4th century was more, was more bloody than all the three centuries collected together. You either join the mother harlot, pagan maniac institution, or, or be persecuted. Constantine was a pagan high priest or of, of Sol Invictus, that is the unconquerable sun god. Uh, as to say Pontifex Maximus, as to say the, the high pagan bridge builder, um, you know, the high pagan priest. So, apparently I made a response to him on a video. Anyway, um, see here. I would hardly agree with the statement, Romanism is the church of the devil being led by that Antichrist. Uh, but I guess I'm... It is responding to three instead of responding to one. I, I don't know. I don't know how that all works around and all that. But anyway... Uh, let's get back to the article. So anyway, so he's like, oh, you know, where the, where are the Protestants and all that? Oh, by the, the, did I mention the Nazarenes as well in that group? Anyway, uh, but they were actually pretty early around. You want, you want to know how early Protestants was around? You know, I'll show you. Um, I'll show you where, how early they were. You know, uh, let's see here. Um, see here. There we go. 115. There we go. That's how early um, that's how early the Protestants was around. Uh, see so here protesting against the Romanizers. There we go. That's a little hard here. Mm -hmm. There we go. This thou knowest that all that means all, right? All means all, right? They which are in Asia, that's the province of Asia Minor, be turned away from me, of whom are Figulus and Hamogenus. Uh, so, yeah, Asia, Asia Orient, Asia proper, proper, proper counselor, Asia embracing Mesia, Lydia, Phrygia, and Caria corresponding today to Turkey today. Uh, anyway, of uncertain derivation, Asia, that is Asia Minor, usually only the Western Shore uh, Asia, that is uh, West Turkey, and Jesus, of course, is writing uh, to the seven congregations in Asia Minor, and they apparently have rejected Paul, all of them. Anyway, um, but then you can go to the Revela you know, Revelation chapter 2, verse 2, and all that. Anyway, uh, so that's, you know, the Protestants was around in the, in the first century, and actually, there was two groups being sown in the first century, uh, Jesus prophesied that the good eatable wheat would first be sown by him, and then the poisonous darnel or tares would come afterwards, being sown by the devil. And so, yeah, anyway, so of course that would be happening, and it did, of course. And throughout the many, many centuries, the Romanizers and per has persecuted the Judaizers, and, you know, what do you call it, defamed them or ridiculed them or, you know, uh, attacked them. And, uh, you know, they have Romanized. And Romanizing is to lead people away from the law of God and leads them to the law, you know, the law of the Antichrist. You know, pretty much begin to corrupt the law of God and lead people away from it. And it had worked wonders, you know, um, you know, making people think that the law of Jehovah is done away with, it's abolished, it's no more and all that. And yet the Bible says, for example, in the book of Daniel that 
the little horn thinks to change times and laws. So if the if the little horn thinks to change times and laws, and times would be like you know festivals, the Sabbath, and so forward, um, the appointed times of of Passover. Um, um, Passover, seven days of unleavened bread, Shavuot, in regards to the uh, Pentecost, as it also is called, um, uh, where you count to 50 or seven Sabbaths and then the next, you know. Um, and then you have Day of Trumpet, uh, Day of Atonement, and uh, Sukkot. You know, you have all these festivals that have been changed. And, uh, you know, oh, we don't need to keep those anymore. So we'll just keep the satanic bullshit instead. You know, Roman bullshit. But well, I do wonder what that was. Um, but I already have a follower, apparently. And I'm not, I'm not, I've not even made much in regards of... I really should set up my profile again. And, you know, I don't know in regards of my name. Anyway, if anyone wants to add me and all that, at least for the moment, uh, my profile is Jesus God underscore Pope 666 and, you know, uh, gabe.com But maybe I should actually have make it a little easier. Maybe I should have made a easier, you know, uh, you know, for people to look up. I don't know. I'm still, you know, I'm still uh, kind of uncertain on that. Anyway, um, so, it would, you know, it's much easier to just, you know, like say Dakia, whatever, uh, you know, Snabley, uh, uh, you know, Gabe.com. You know, if you if you if you're going to fix uh, something to someone else to join, you know, to 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 get your profile or something like that, that would be easier to just have a small, you know, very small. Um, yeah. Anyway, whatever. But you know, the message and all that is important. I think. Anyway, let's get back to it. The saints protested against the popes long before the Protestant Reformation. The Roman Catholic belief study shows how the saints were protesting against the popes of Rome long before the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. And by the way, if you want to know in regards of Romanism, there is a free book uh, that is called, you know, what is it called? That's a good question. Uh, but it's free and you can download it. If you search on it, you will should be able to find it pretty quickly um let's get uh back here uh what could it be yeah this is it's called uh, the history of romanism by uh, dowling something um what was it called dowling john dowling i think so the history of romanism by john dowling and it's a free book and it's uh it's a collection of where he had tried to collect pretty much a huge amount of, you know, and concentrated uh, information about uh, Romanism. Now, of course, there are other works out there on things, you know, that would be probably very interesting to read that we have forgotten all, all about. But this is a pretty good, I think, uh, start. If you want to know a lot of lost history that we have no idea of in our days. There we go. Um... That this is what be and it's free, you know. And a lot of the books actually are free, but gives gives you a more sense of what they actually knew at the time that we have totally forgotten and uh, have no idea of. This is a um, new edition, AD eighteen seventy 1870 or eighteen seventy one. Pretty much is you know eighty seven and eighteen seventy one is the same edition. Uh, uh, we have some uh, Greek Babylon e e me. Gali is or something. I, I can't read. Uh, uh, see, um, Mitia Ton. I don't know. Anyway, so, but anyway, here is uh, by John Dowling. Um, I see if we have the name History of Romanism. The history of Romanism from the earliest corruptions of Christianity with chronological table, indexes, and glossary and Lu no numerous illustratable uh, engravings. And um, so if you want to know about Roman history, this book seems to, I haven't read it all. I've listened to, I guess, around 500 pages and all that and gotten the, the thing, you know, you know, gotten information about it and read about that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a pretty good book. Uh, pretty good start on on history of romanism 
So you can go get that if you want to learn more, more about Roman history and see all the, the, you know, the disgusting things that uh, Romanism have done throughout the ages and so forward. Anyway, so the saints protest against the popes long before the Protestant Reformation. This Roman Catholic belief study shows how the saints were protesting against the popes of Rome long before the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. Some Catholics proclaimed that the protest against the popes started with the Protestant Reformation and that the Protestant churches aren't the legitimate because they came after the Roman church. But that is misleading as there was no reason for the saints to protest against the popes until they ascended until they ascended to power and started teaching concept which are contrary to scripture but we actually have a lot of sources before 1500 in regards of of groups and uh protests these are they were all they were around the first century the um, the judaizers if you look into history and we have lost a lot of material but the Judaizers was around, and you can see that by the Rome, you know, a lot of documents, Roman Catholic documents, where they are speaking against the Judaizers. So we might not have the, we might have lost a lot of uh, documents because Rome, you know, have a way of going around and destroying everything. But we can still uh, see uh, the other side as well, so we can still get the pieces together. You see, if someone speaks against people keeping the festivals uh, of God in the late 4th century, well, we know that there were still people around. And if they're speaking against the Judaizers, also speaking against this or that and all that, well, we know they were still around. So we know there were people, you know, not agreeing with... Uh... Anyway... So the power of the popes reached a pinnacle in the 12th through 15th centuries as they attained independent sovereignty, absolutely supremacy over the Christian church and full control over the princes of Europe. Uh, Pope Innocent III, 1198 to 1216 said, We may, according to the fullness of our power, dispose of the law and dispense above the law those whom the Pope of Rome do it separate. It is not a, a man that separates them but God. For the Pope's hold the, hold the place on earth, not simple of a man but the true God. Source the Cretals of Gregory the Ninth, Book 1, Chapter 3. So, he was the most powerful of all poops. He claimed to be vicar of Christ, vicar of God, and supreme sovereign over the church and the world. He claimed the right to dispose kings and princes, and that all things on earth and in heaven and in hell are subject to the vicar of Christ. Uh, I remember one of the books, it's told actually about the vicar of Christ, actually, it's just, you have the Latin and Greek and all that, and it could actually be synonymous to the Antichrist, actually, saying vicar of Christ could be synonymous to actually, you know, saying Antichrist. Uh, but I can't remember how that goes. That was another book in regards to the Antichrist. Uh, I think it was, there's a three-hour book reading uh, on that, around three hours, I think, three in between. Um, anyway, so he brought the church into supreme, uh, supreme control of the state, the kings of Germany, France, England, and practically all the monarchs of Europe obeyed his will. He even brought the Byzantine Empire under his control. Never in history has any one anyone man exerted more power. Here are more quotes from Pope Innocent III, and far from innocent, that's for sure, which caused the saints to protest against him. Pope Innocent III declared that nobody can be saved outside of his church and authority. And also, oh, by the way, not to forget, we also have a group from uh, 680, uh, well, 6th century. Uh, that was uh, that's a book, 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 books of martyrs. Oh, no, Child's Books of Martyrs. Child's, Child's Book of Martyrs talks about that there was a group in, um, and apparently Christianity in England can apparently be led back to the first century uh, pretty early. And uh, But anyway, in the sixth century, apparently, uh, we see a conflict between the Romanizers and the Christians in England. And of course, you know, they protest and don't want to join up with the Roman Catholic Church who has converted the Saxons. So, of course, they just get the Saxons to kill off the Christians, you know. Anyway, uh, you know, typical thing of Rome. Uh, if you can, you know, if, you, if soft power doesn't work, well, the steel will do, right? 
Anyway, Pope Innocent III declared that nobody can be saved out of, out of his church and authority. With our hearts, we believe that with our lips we confess but one church, not that of of the, of the heretics, but the holy, you know, it's always holy when it's, you know, the so-called holy Roman Empire and all that. Anyway, uh, holy Roman Catholic and apostolic church outside which we believe that no one is saved. Uh, yeah, this thing, uh, 423. So Pope, Pope Innocent the Third prohibited, um, I guess he should actually be called Pope, the... Absolutely. You know, what, what is the opposite of innocent? You know, poop the murderer the third or something. Anyway, uh, poop the innocent the third prohibited the saints from, you know, they're always turning things, flipping things 180 degrees around, it seems, you know. Uh, so poop the innocent the third prohibited the saints from having the scriptures. Oh, what? There, what? We have a Christian, so called Christian church that don't allow that people can read the Bible? That doesn't sound Christian to me, you know. Anyway. Let's see, we prohibit laymen possessing copies of the Old and New Testament. We forbid them most severely to have the above books in the popular vernacular in regards to the tongue and, you know, tongue spoken by the people, meaning in their country's native language as the Pubal Church only allowed their priests to read it in Latin. Hmm. Source the Council of Toulouse or something like that, Canon 14. So we have the next one. Pope Innocent the Third proclaimed that if the saints believe were well, contrary to the popes, then they should be burned to death. Anyone who attempts to construe a personal view of God, which conflict with Catholic Church dogma, must be burned without pity. Source: Papal Bull, eleven ninety eight A.D. And that's, you know, of course, totally bullshit. Anyway. Yeah, it's too typical poopish bullshit, you know. So, Pope Innocent the Fourth convened the first Council of Lyons, 1245, issued the bull at Extiependa that permitted the torture of heretics, 1252. Sounds so loving, right? You know, sounds so unchristian, you know. Anyway, because it's not Christian. But Pope Ben, you know, yeah, just look at the torture devices that they use. You have to be kidding me, you know. The most, some of the most disgusting torture devices ever. You know, how could anyone make, make, make these things out without the help of from devils, you know, or demons? It's just so disgusting. Anyway, Pope Boniface uh, the 8th, 1294 to 1303, issued Unam Saktam. 1302, which proclaimed papal supremacy and pushing it to its historical extreme. Pope Benefas the Eighth proclaimed that salvation is only through the papacy, or as I call it, the the great stinking papacy. Anyway, uh, we declare, assert, define, and pronounce to the subject to the Roman Pontiff is to every creature altogether necessary for salvation. Dot, dot, dot. I have the authority of the King of Kings. I am all in all and above all, so that God himself and I, the Vicar of Christ, have but one consistory. And I am able to do almost all that God can do. What therefore can you make me but God? Papal Bull Unam Saktum 1302 well, maybe I could make you, uh, proclaim you the Antichrist. Oh, yeah, I think I could. Anyway, the bulls ends. Furthermore, we declare, we proclaim, we define that it is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman pontiff. No, oh, really? So the natural, by the way, you know, the little horn of, of Daniel is Roman. It's on the Roman beast. So if you can find the Roman Emperor in the world, you know, Caesar, Pontifex Maximus, and so forward, you will find the Antichrist. It's not really that hard, you know. Just, you know, you have Babylonian, Medo-Persian, you have the Grecian beast, and what comes next after the Grecian beast? And if you know history, you would know, well, who, who ruled Israel when Jesus came into, uh, you know, was... Uh, you know, coming into this world in flesh, when he became, when the word became flesh. Well, the Romans, the Romans ruled after the Grecian. The Romans took over the Grecians and uh, ruled, and uh, it's still in effect. 
Now we have two stages of Rome. We have the pagan Roman uh, Empire, and then we have the so-called Holy Roman Empire. Anyway, well, unholy Roman Empire. Anyway, okay, so uh, and that's where we are today. So I'll find the Roman Emperor, you know, that takes upon all himself all the titles of God and all that, you know, then you will have found the Antichrist. It's not really that hard, you know. Give me, you know, why is people having so so much difficulty with it? You know, I don't understand. You know, they and they want to to have all these beasts to be something else and just totally, you know, it just totally messes it up. The first beast is Babylonian. It's the golden head. Then you have the silver, the silver. That's the Medo Persians. Then you have the 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 copper. That's the Grecians. And then you have the iron. And that's of course is Rome. It just it, it fits. It fits historically. You know, looking at you know the things of gold, uh, silver, and and um, you know bronze. And if you look at the items that they're using, uh, iron. It's just very interesting how the it it fits up with. Uh, you know, as as far as my research goes. So, but anyway, the beast are representing these, and the last beast have more stages. You know, it's a different than the other three beasts. And um, then the little horn comes up, plucking up three other horns, plug. You know, and there we go. There we go. The little little horn that persecutes the saints. Well, who are the saints? Well, those you know, testifying uh, for Jesus Christ. Anyway, so let's go move forward here. So the natural response of the saints to the blasphemous pro pro proclamation uh, of the poops was to protest against them. Again, as you know, as far as I can see, pro Protestants was already around in the first century. They were the Judaizers, you know, those that would be deemed Judaizers. And of course, you know, the Romanizers always put on a, a, a negative spin on being a Judaizer, you know. Because the Judaizers are still believing that we should, you know, keep to the law of God and not to the law of, of the Antichrist, you know. Um, you know, not... Uh, anyway, so let's see. Uh, Arnulf, uh, 991, the Bishop of Orleans proclaimed the Pope as the Antichrist, sitting in the temple of God and showing himself as God. Deplored the Roman Popes as monsters of guilt, and yeah, indeed... Well, how, how would that be? Well, they invent sin and they tell you, you know, that, you, you know, uh, um, this and that. And if you do this, you know, you need to pay for, for your sins to the Roman Catholic. They made a money business out of it. You know, it's just money, 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 money. So that's pretty much Roman Catholicism loves the money, you know, and I'll pay for your sins, you know, and pay for, you know, your grandmother in purgatory and pay for, you know, your, you know, when your family member dies or whatever, you pay for the mass, pay for whatever, you know, money, 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 money. Yep. Anyway. Um, and of course, you know, it's like the mafia, right? You know, mafia going out, you know, murdering people or whatever. Hey, why are they, hey, just go to a Roman Catholic priest, right? And you can get you know, subs, you know, what do you call it? Subs, you know, subs, you know, you can give for forgiveness for your sins, you know. And then you can, of course, just go out and do it again, you know. Uh, a cre incredible wicked system, of course, not the idea that Jesus, you know, uh, uh, Jesus told us to repent, you know, to repent and look to him. And the idea is to be a disciple of Jesus. And uh, so anyway, uh, not be a, not be out and, and willingly just committing murder and, uh, you know, whatever the mafia are doing of, you know, horrible things. Anyway, so, anyway, deplored the Roman poops as monsters of guilt and uh, declared in the council. And if you want to, to see historical sources of that, you know, we got some one thing after another of different uh, things that is... Um, you can read the Fox's books of Martyrs, Child books of Martyrs, uh, the Mirrors Martyrs, which I haven't uh, looked into yet. But anyway, that's is, uh, is, is stories of people that wasn't, um, you know, it's like Fox's Book of Martyrs, but it does, it only has the people that was non-violent pretty much in regards of. Uh, so that will be interesting read, and I'm sure there will be a lot of gold in that book as well. Anyway.
uh, big, big, big collection. Uh, so uh, both Fox's books of Matthews are, are pretty big. And uh, the Matthews Mirror, as I understand it, is also a pretty big collection. Um, but I still have yet to look into my uh, Mirror's Matthew. But there's a lot of good Protestant books telling the truth and historical truth. And you can then see how the Roman Romanizers are actually acting. It's just out there in the open. They, you know, when you read these books, they can't run around the corner with you because you know yourself what they do. But anyway, so deplore the Roman popes as monsters of guilt and, and declared in the council called the King of France in uh, 19, 1991 AD that the pontiff clad, clad in purple and gold and then of course his royal colors uh, was Antichrist sitting in the temple of God and showing himself as God. Philip Schaff, a History of the Christian Church, eight volumes, a reprint of the third, 1910, uh, Grand Rapids Mitch uh, VMB Edmonds Publishing CO. So Gerbert of Reims uh, said that the Pope was the Antichrist sitting in the temple of God. Before the year 1000, Gerbert said of the Pope sitting on his lofty throne in gold and purple, that if destitute of charity, he was Antichrist si sitting in the temple of God. Berenda said the Roman See, and that's another word for, you know, um, the system, you know, the, uh, what is it called? Uh, you can look that up for yourself. Anyway, uh, said the Roman seed to be not uh, to be not the apostolic seed, but the seed of Satan. In the eleventh century, referring to the Pope's reinforcement of the time of the doctrine of transubstantiation, Baranda affirmed the Roman seed to be not to be not the apostolic seed, but the seed of Satan. Edward II, twelve fourteen, Archbishop of Salzburg, affirmed that the Pope was the Antichrist. Stated at a synod of bishops held at Regensburg in 1240 that the people of his day were accustomed to calling the Pope Antichrist. Leroy Edwin from the prophetic faith of our fathers. The early witnesses were people called uh, the Albigenses and Waldensians called Vaudois in France. God had entrusted them with preserving his holy word, which is why the Pope church persecuted them so relentless. The Albigensians called the Church of Rome the Hall of Babylon. Oh, really? Yeah, I think they were pretty spot on. Um, in the sunny south of France in Provence and Catalonia lived the Albigensians, who were Bible-believing followers of Christ. The Albigensian Christians preached against the immorality of the Roman Catholic priesthood, Pilgrimates, worship of saints and idols, opposed the pompous and pretentious claims of the Church of Rome and make great use of scriptures. By 1167, they, the Albigensian Christians, were a majority of the population of South France. The Albigensians all agreed in ch regarding the Church of Rome as having absolute perverted Christianity and in maintaining that it was she who was designated in the Apocalypse by the name of the Hall of Babylon. I think they were pretty spot on on that as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so they were Protestants. Rome could not endure this testimony. She drew her deadly sword and waged war against those who bore it. The Albigensian Crusade 1209 to 1229 was a 20-year military campaign initiated by Pope Innocent III to eliminate the Albigensians in the south of France. In 12 1229, the Roman Catholic Inquisition executed 32,000 Bible-believing Albigensian Christians at Toulouse, France, and confiscated all their property. Yeah, so because, you know, that's what we do, right? Let's conserve, you know, they were heretics, so we'll just take their property, right? By the time the Roman Catholic armies finished these crusades, almost the entire population of southern France, mostly Albigensian Christians, has been exterminated. Yeah. You know, there's no way, you know, if you go and read some real history, there's no way that, you know, you can, it's, it's, it's just, it's just there. They're, they're destroying people to the left and the right, you know, uh, persecuting the saints. She's drunken by the blood of the saints. 
So the Waldensians called the Roman Church the harlot of Babylon and the papacy the man of sin and Antichrist. <laughs> yeah, that they got that correct as well. Um, Peter Waldo, 1140 to 1280, was a rich merchant of Lyons, France, who gave up everything to preach the gospel. Waldo's followers called themselves the poor in spirit. The Waldensians were orthodox in their belief, but they were outside of the organizational structure of the Roman Catholic Church. They traveled in pairs, preaching the gospel. They were humble people who believed in apostolic poverty. They were barefoot, owing nothing, and they shared all things in common. Barefoot, hmm, okay, must be in cold in the upper, anyway. So they were considered to be a threat because they set standards which made the members of the Catholic clergy look, look bad by comparison. So they were considered to be a threat because they set standards which made many members of the Catholic clergy look bad by comparison. In 1184, Pope Lucius III excommunicated Valdo and his followers, you know, because that's something, you know, that, you know, as the, you know, uh, as the highest temporal and spiritual, actually this, the highest spiritual and temporal power in the world, you know, the poops thinks they can do things of that nature. Anyway, so they were students of prophe prophecy from the oldest times. In the book of Waldensian pastors, Liga called treaties on Antichrist, written in 1120, said that treaties brands the Roman church as the harlot Babylon and the papacy as the man of sin and Antichrist. Waldensian's Reinario Sacro asserted that the Romish church is not the church of Jesus Christ, but the church of malignant. Oh, interesting, malignant. That's an interesting word. Let's just look that up. Ut lot va leva enima nefes yehudi and I can't remember the rest. Do 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 do. So dangerous to health. Oh yeah. Malignant. Yeah, most most definitely dangerous to health. Uh, absolutely cancerous. Well, okay. Uh, uh, a fungus infection. You know. Um, so, a legal called treaties on Antichrist written in 1120 said that the treaties brand the Roman church as a harlot, Babylon, and the papacy as the man of sin and Antichrist. Oh, Waldensians Reinario Sacro asserted that the Roman church is not the church of Jesus Christ, but a church of malignant and that it apostatized under Sylvester. Well, actually, I think actually very early on, actually already. You see, uh, Paul or Paulus or Shaol, the Roman Pharisee, went to Rome. Now, Roman Pharisee Paulus also was the first that committed to, you know, persecuting the saints, you know. And, you know, saw some kind of vision, whatever, in the desert, that which we have four versions uh, of all, you know, uh, testimonies in the New Testament, which seems to not totally add up. Um, and, you know, then, of course, begin to uh, lead people away into lawlessness. So, you know, and then goes to Rome. And, you know, surely he must have established his uh, system there. Um and then we see the conflict between Rome and Asia Minor and history and all that. So in regards of Easter and Passover, we also begin, you know, uh, the Romanizers attacks the idea of a thousand year reign as a Jewish fable, you know, the Judaizers, you know. So I already, you know, they begin to attack, uh, you know, uh, people very pretty quickly the truth. They attack the truth and, and leads people away from the law and away from the Bible. Anyway, and away, you know, away from the festivals that Jesus kept. You know, Jesus kept the festivals, the Sabbath and all that. Um, but anyway, not two cents. Ah, so, let's see here. Yeah. But the church of malignant and it apostatized under Sylvester. I think it was already, you know, um, things going on. But it's hard to, because a lot of history has been, you know, there's a lot of documents that has been removed or has been destroyed. And 
Uh, a lot of the things we can thank Rome for. Anyway, and that the Church of Rome is the harlot in the Apocalypse, the testimony of the Reformers, E. Bickerstein, 1836, page 46, from the testimony of Renanio Sacro in 1254. Uh, that was the faith and con confession of the Waldensians for which they were killed by the Pupil Church, or as they call here, Papal Church, uh, whereupon we... All our posterity have to understand that what by the reasons and arguments wherewith the Antichrist of Rome is wont to uphold the impious seed of his abomination, who now is to come to such excess and profundity of all kinds of iniquity, that all justice, equity, and verity being set aside, he seeketh the defense of his cause by no other thing then only by force and violence, terror and oppression and shedding of blood. Foxes Book of Martius, the Valdensian Martius in Province. So there you go. So that's the book of uh, Foxes Book of Martius. A lot of uh, information on that. A long, long book. Uh, and it's free as well, by the way. Although I'm not sure which version would be the... I know that Foxes Book of Martius, he, 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 I think he makes three versions before he dies. Uh, he makes the first version and then he uses, what was it, like seven years to correct some things here and there. Uh, you know, he flees some from England, writes the books, as I understand it, goes back uh, and begins to correct things that has been mistaken and all that and and further improve his work. I think he, he gets to three releases and the book gets to, it gets to be fixed to a lot of churches uh, with an iron chain so people can read uh, read it uh, like the Bible. Anyway, uh, where not a few persons but whole villages and townships with the most part of all the aforesaid country, both men, women and children are put to all kinds of cruelty and suffered martyrdom for the profession of the gospel. The history of the persecution and wars against the people called Waldensians and Waldois in the valleys of Angron, Angron Lausanne, St. Martin, Perosa, and others in the country of Piedmont from A.D. 1555 to A.D. 1561. For who would ever judge or suspect it in his mind that the Bishop of Rome, commonly received and believed almost of all men, to be the vicar and vice garant of Christ here in earth, to be Antichrist? and the great adversary of God, whom so-called St. Paul so oppressively prophesied of in these later days, to be re revealed by the brightness of the Lord's coming, as all men now for the most part may see uh, it is come to pass. Fox's Book of Martyrs, the Waldensian Martyrs, and Piedmont. Now, a lot of people haven't realized that there's something fishy going on with Paulus, the Roman Pharisee and all that, but Jesus was warning us about wolves in sheep clothing that, if possible, could deceive the elect, okay? Um, and it happened very early, you know, that the corruption began, you know? Um, you don't think Satan would just sit back and just let the truth go out in the world, you know, without trying to infiltrate it, you know? Would you? Anyway, um, yeah, so... Uh, uh, Miral of Cesena declared the Church of Rome to be, you know, so the thing is, we have two Gospels in the beginning and you can collect the data from different sources, uh, you know, from the New Testament, uh, you know, reading the Bible and looking at the historical uh, pieces we have here and there. And you can see that there's two Gospels going out very early. Um, and one Gospel is, you know, leading away from the law that's the Roman Isos, and then you have the other that leads to the law, that's the Judaizers. Um, and then you have to question which gospel is the correct one, you know? And, you know, we know in regards to future, Jesus talks about that, you know, that um, because of lawlessness will grow, the love of many will, no, it's like, the love of many will grow cold because of lawlessness and all that. You have... You know, that's, you know, we have future things in regards to future because of lawlessness and all that. And so you have a lot of, of, uh, of pieces, of puzzle pieces, you know, you can co connect together. Uh, but anyway, so, but of course, Jesus told us that, that, that it would, it would happen, you know, um, 
that the poison, you know, that the poisonous darnel, uh, which looks a lot like weed, you know, would would grow up um, with the, you know, so the poisonous darnel would grow up with the weed, you know, together uh, until the harvest. And as I heard for, from someone that weed, when they when it becomes to have fruits and all that, uh, it begins to bow, whereas the darnel doesn't doesn't bow and it's stronger in the in the thing so it stands more straightforward uh, you know stiff so at the time of harvest as I understood it you could actually take the tares easily and then harvest uh, the wheat afterwards because the tares now stands above the 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 wheat that is bowing that was an interesting information for sure uh would be interesting to try it out for yourself you know uh, uh to get some uh, kernels for uh, for wheat and for some da Darnell and see if it's true. I guess there might be different variations and all that. But anyway, it would be interesting. I have thought about, you know, instead of having flowers and all that, just fix a bucket with uh, with these things and, and try it out, you know. Of course, I would need to get some seeds first. Anyway, the Miral of Cisane declared the Church of Rome to be the whole of Babylon. Miral twelve seventeen to thirteen forty two, who came out of the Franciscan order of the Catholic Church, declared the Pope to be the Antichrist and the Church of Rome to be the whole of Bab Babylon, drunk with the blood of the saints. Fox's books of Martyrs, op p four hundred and forty five. Not sure what that means, but anyway, we have page, you know, but op and sit. Oh, citation maybe. Uh, Citation and page 445, but I'm not sure what the up means. Anyway, John, John Whitecliffe said, Antichrist, the head of all these evil men, is the Pope of Rome. Uh, John, 1330 to 1384, called the morning star of the Reformation, uh, spent the... Uh, spent most of his life teaching at Oxford University and was recognized by John Gowan, the Duke of Lancaster, as extraordinary gifted in theology. He translated the Latin Vulgate Bible into English and placed it in the hands of the people. And they were called the Lollards. And of course, the church persecuted the Lollards as well, you know. Uh, can't have the people, people writing, uh, reading the Bible in their own tongue, right? So Wycliffe said the... The, of the poop. Uh, when the Western Church was divided for about 40 years between two rival poops, one in Rome and the other in Avignon, France, each poop called the other poop Antichrist. And John Wycliffe is reputed to have regarded them as both being right, two halves of Antichrist making up the perfect man of sin between them. We suppose the, that Antichrist, the, the head of all these evil men, is the poop of Rome. I, I be not sure what that means, page 90. So 40 years after his death, the Roman Catholic Church stuck up his bones and had them burned, and the ashes were thrown into the river. Now that is after they have burned the, you know, the horse in, uh, what was it like, uh, in, uh, I can't remember the place, uh, in Prague, I think. Prague, uh, horse came from Prague, and he was burned in Bulgaria or something like that. I can't remember. I can't remember the details. But all oh, after Haas, they went up afterwards and burned the the bones of Whitecliffe, dug them up and burned them to ashes. And you know, uh, so Walter Brood was martyred for saying the Pope is the Antichrist. So Walter was noted scholar. Prof I do wonder why they don't have uh, you know Haas. You know because you have. The writings of Whitecliffe going to Prague and Haas reading things and all that and finding out that, you know, things. And then he ends up uh, getting burned, although he actually have uh, uh, the king's uh, things that he's not going to be, you know, he, that he can't be heard. And yet, of course, that is um, refuted. And then the church just burns him, right? Because a heretic, you know, it's just... Uh, another guy apparently seems to also be burned with Huss, um, if I'm, but I have to, I can't, yeah, I have to study that more. But anyway, so 40, 40 uh, years after the death, the Roman Catholic Church dug up his bones and had them burned, and the ashes were thrown into the river. Walter Brood was martyred for saying the Pope is the Antichrist. Walter was a noted scholar, prophetic expositor, and associated of Wycliffe. 
1391, he was accused of saying the Pope is Antichrist and a seducer of the people and utterly against the law and life of Christ, and he was killed for his testimony. Now, I, I, wish, I, I wish I would have known all these things very early on and would also have been, you know, I would have a lot of things to research from my early childhood, you know, that would have been very interesting to actually investigate. And yet, I'm sitting here uh, having been deceived and led astray for so many years and just n pretty much now beginning to dig into it and, you know, I'm feeling like I've just hit the top of the iceberg, you know. It's a huge, gigantic iceberg under the water. Gigantic, huge. I've just hit the... I just feel like I just touched the top of the iceberg, you know, pretty much. And... Um, uh, all these words to learn and all that. Uh, same thing, I guess, in regards of the Bible, you know, where I'm thinking, why, why don't I know these words? You know, you learn a lot of words, that's for sure, new words. Anyway, let's go forward here. Um, so apparently they have the source for Foxes 84. Uh, it sounds like it might be the Foxes Book of Matthews from that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, Matthias of Jano said the Pope is the most wicked Christian, falsely styling himself by that name. Well, I would never call the, I would never call him uh, uh, a Christian. But anyway, the Romanizers call themselves Christians, right? The question is, are they really Christians? You know, well they're running around killing the saints. You know. Of course, you know, the, you know, if you talk to a Catholic, they're like, well, you know, that's the Roman Catholic Church that saints people, you know. Oh, really? Oh, really? I thought, I thought God, you know, decided who the saints are, not, you know. But anyway, apparently, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a bullshit copycat system, you know, uh, that turns some, you know, things upside down. Anyway, Matthias was a 4th century Bohemian ecclesiastical writer. Matthias came to be known as the Bohemian Wycliffe. He received his doctorate from the University of Paris and in 1381 became the canon in the Cathedral of Prague. His writings paved the way for the Hussite movement. Oh, interesting. Uh, I do wonder when Huss was... You know, again, there's so much history and so many, so many things that... Uh, and of course, you know, uh, Crusades was uh, put against the Hussites. But apparently the Pubis army was uh, beaten back again and again and again. Uh, several times, if my memory recalls. Um, it's Again, there's so much history. And the problem is that people don't know these things. So when you talk about it, people are like, you know, oh, that doesn't, you know, they don't even believe you, you know. Uh, so you, you are already in the thing that people already are in the, in the, in the sense of doubting. And so it's really, it's really, so when you talk about the things, they're just like, you know, they're looking at you like you're, you know, <laughs> that you're out of your mind pretty much. Uh, and yet this was something that people knew in the past, you know, um, Jano based his conclusions about the Antichrist on second Thessalonians two. And Daniel 7 and Revelation 13 and 17, here's one of his statements. The Antichrist has already come. He's in the Jew, pagan Sararison, and that would be uh, Mohammedan as far as I remember. A pagan Sararison, I think it's pretty much uh, Mohammedan. Um, Sararish, Sarasian. I think it's used like a uh, Mohammedan Sarasian or something like that, let's see. I think I wrote that co incorrect, but uh, let's see. Here. Sarasian. Oh, maybe I got it right. Sarasian. Okay. Uh, no. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I think it also was known for. Uh, it might have been like for a group of people at some point, but. I think it became pretty much known as, you know, for Mohammedans. I'm not, no, maybe, maybe it's, I'm wrong here. Uh, anyway, for, you know, maybe it's just a pagan group, you know. I just thought it was also used for the Mohammedans. Um, again, I'm far from, you know, there's so much I don't know. So, uh, it's very sad that uh, we don't know. And I'm already a full cup, you know, uh, or flowing. Um... So the Antichrist has already come. He is neither Jew, pagan, Saracen, 
nor will the tyrant, but the man who opposes Christian truth and the Christian life by way of deception. So, but 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 the man who opposes Christian truth and the Christian way of uh, uh, Christian life by way of deception, he is and will be the most wicked Christian. Falsely styling himself by that name, assuming the highest station in the church, and possessing the highest consideration, arrogating dominion over all ecclesiastics and laymen. One who, by the working of Satan, assumes to himself power and wealth and honor, and makes the church with its goods and sacraments subservient to his own carnal ends. From PFF, Volume 2, page 40. John Paul Way said the papacy was the kingdom of the Antichrist. John 1350, uh, 1354-1414 uh, was one of the leading followers of the English theologian and reformer John Wycliffe during his during the late 14 and early and early. Oh, okay. Um, Luther said we are not the first to interpret 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 the papacy as the kingdom of Antichrist. He, John Purvey, in 1390 AD, rightly and truly pronounces the Pope Antichrist as he is. A witness indeed for ordained by God to confirm our doctrine. Martin Luther, Commentarios in Apocalypse reprint. Uh, Sir John Old Castle, a follower of Whitecliffe, proclaimed the Pope as the great Antichrist, the son of perdition, the son of uh, son of petition, the open adversary of God and the abomination standing in the holy place. John died in 14, well, in regards to the abomination standing in the holy place. I think they got that somewhat wrong, but if you look at the, in regards to the abomination, in regards to Jewish history, in regards of the, 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 the things when the Jews fought the Grecians and all that, you can see that things of the same nature are happening um, where they also talk about, you know, the things. Um, so, um, and of course, Jesus talks about the abomination and all that. So I think it will actually will be an idol in the temple that will be, uh, but anyway, a future, in a future temple um, and probably the Antichrist, you know, um, will, uh, you know, maybe be in that temple and that will be put up a, an image, uh, but we'll see, you know, we'll see. Um, but we already have from the past, we have some things that, you know, help help us to interpret what, you know, the abomination of uh, standing in the holy place and all that is. I think it's an idol standing in the temple. That seems to be what the Jews meant in the past or understood in the past. Um, so, uh, so by using that, you know, by using the past, Unlocking the future in regards of understanding of that. Anyway, uh, John died in 1417. You know, uh, uh, 1417 was an English Lollard leader. And again, Lollards are the ones that reads the Bible and came out from Whitecliffe, who was also known as Lord Cobham. Oh, I've heard about him uh, before. Was knight of Herefordshire and a prominent follower of Whitecliffe. He unequivocally stated... But as touching the Pope and his spirituality, I owe them neither suit nor service or so much as I know him by the scriptures put to be that Antichrist, the son of perdition, the open adversary of God, and the abomination standing in the holy place. From PFF, volume 2, page 80, 88. I think, I think he got the wrong in regards to the abomination standing in the holy place. But, um, but you have to remember that, you know, that's, you know, we are all learning, right? And a lot of things has been uh, deleted and, uh, the you know, it takes time to study and begin to figure out things and all that. And because we don't have more people hewing rope from Satan, it can be, uh, but yeah, but yeah, he got, he got it right in regards to the Antichrist, the son of petition, the open adversary of God and all that. That's the poop, you know? Um, but the abomination standing in the holy place I think will be an idol in the future standing in the temple uh, in Jerusalem. Um, so when the Antichrist is going to get, you might, we'll see, you know, I might be wrong, but we have the last part of the book of Daniel talks about the end time and regards of the, you know, regards of the daily be taken away. And as I understand it, the daily, 
is talking about uh, the sacrifice, the daily sacrifice. And, uh, and then we have the abomination standing in the place where it shouldn't stand, that is in regards to an idol, uh, at least from what we also have from the past. And, you know, so, uh, yeah, so, you know, so that's just how I see it. And people then f apparently think I'm going, hey, I don't know. But anyway, I think that's at least it's going to be one temple more. And I think there uh, could be actually two, maybe. Actually, that, that, you know, you have the first temple and the second temple. Uh, and I guess the second temple was made into a bigger temple and all. But anyway, uh, but the third temple, as it is called, I think will absolutely come around. And I think there might be another temple as well. Um, but, well, you know, who knows? You know, um, I don't, you know, I might be wrong, but uh, at least the third, I'm, I'm absolutely, uh, you know, there has to be, you know, reading the scriptures, there has to be a third temple. You know, there has to be, uh, and of course the Jews are pretty ready to, uh, to do that. Uh, I just listened to a source that said that they could probably fix a temple in less than a year. You know, that's pretty incredible. But, uh, but I, I, but yeah, I would agree that they, you know, it seems like they have everything, you know, if they get, if they allow to do it, it could be very quickly that it would come up, you know. Um, so. Anyway, being a friend of Henry V, he long escaped prosec prosecution for heresy. Uh, so being a friend of Henry V, he long escaped persecution uh, for heresy. He spoke of the Pope in, in these words. I know him by the scriptures to be the great Antichrist, the son of perdition. Rome is the very nest of Antichrist, and out of the nest comes all the disciples of him. Genius uh, up citation page 134. So, I guess that is still Lord Cobham. Uh, when convicted, he escaped from the Tower of London. Oh yeah, that was the guy that, oh yeah, I remember reading about him in uh, Charles' books of Martyrs, I think. So he ends up escaping. Uh, if he didn't escape, he would probably have been martyred. Although, I don't, you know, you know, the thing is, I'm not sure he should have, you know, I, it's just very hard, you know, because, you know, it's not... Facing death and all that can, uh, you know, be a pretty, uh, but the question is, maybe it would actually have been more, um, who knows, more, uh, uh, I don't know, but, but if he had stayed there, you know, and, uh, but he ends up fleeing and he gets captured later on and he's killed, uh, if I remember correctly. So when convicted, convicted, he escaped from the Tower of London and then a rebellion against the king and then lead a rebellion against the king. No, 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 no. As far as I read... He don't lead. He he's, he's he's he don't lead a rebellion against the king. He's taught someone is is slandering him as to say that he's leading a rebellion against the king, which he's not. Uh, and telling oh his huge army and all that, and uh, he there's like hundred people or something like that, and they you know they slaughter some of them and capture some of them. It's just uh, it's bullshit. Uh, so. As far as I know, he didn't lead a rebellion. He was just, um, you know, they were out and, and worshipping in the woods and all that, and they get captured and all that. So eventually he was captured and executed in London. So again, as far as I understand it, he did not lead a rebellion against the king, you know. So he didn't, you know, he, he didn't even have the, 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 he didn't even have an army, you know. So, uh, and these people were slandering him and telling the king, oh, you know, he's he's fixing this army against you and all that, and it's just false, you know. So, uh, anyway, for, you know, and probably there's, you know, they might, might be Rome, Romans, you know, that, you know, that have, have you know, they, they lie again and again and again and again. It's nothing new. You figure out that Romanizers, Roman Catholics are pl stinking liars. They're deceivers. They are... So defending their religion and all that, they are bullshitters. And you see that in history sources as well, again and again and again, where they actually just, you know, lie. They, they directly lie about things uh, while they're doing their wicked, other wicked deeds. Anyway, for his testimony, King Henry V had, 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 had him he hanged up by the middle in chains of iron and so consumed alive in the fire, praising the name of God as long as his life lasted. I have a picture of that. That's actually, yeah, that's the child books of Matthew. I remember that. They have a picture where he's hanged 
in chains from the middle and then they just burn him you know i i you know you know i remember one of the things where you know i read you know that they hanged the person first and then they burned him and i maybe that was the guy but i was like oh that's hey, that's at least merciful you know hanging the guy first so he dies right and then burning him off right no 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 hanging and burning at the same time yeah just hang him up and then burn him you know while alive it's just <laughs> give me you know at least you know the ha you know I thought, you know hanging and regard oh, I was thinking oh that's a at least that's merciful you know no 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 hang him up and then burn him while he's alive you know it's just disgusting um uh, so Will William White said that the poop is nothing else but a devilish estate and heavy yoke of Antichrist and therefore he's an enemy unto Christ's truth. William was a follower of John Wycliffe. He was well learned of right and well spoken priest. That the wicked, wicked living of the poop and his holiness is nothing else but a devilish estate and heavy yoke of Antichrist and therefore he is an enemy unto Christ's truth. John Haas proclaimed the Antichrist has had been, uh, there we go with John Haas, and actually it's Jan Haas, as I understand it. So, and that also makes it easier to understand John uh, uh, Whitecliffe and Jan Haas, you know, makes it much more easier to di differentiate. Uh, so John Haas proclaimed the Antichrist has been revealed in the poop, for which he was burned to death. Um, yeah. So Jan Haas, uh, there we go, also known as Jan Haas, 1372 to 1415, was a well-educated man from Bohemia who came under the influence of Wycliffe's writings, which caused him to break in with the Church of Rome. A reformation sprang up in southern Bohemia, a province in uh, northwest Africa. A north Af what is this? A reformation sprang up in southern Bohemia, a province in northwest Africa. Africa. What are you talking about? Uh, I think he got that ra uh, wrong. Uh, this is in Prague, not in Africa. Uh, more than a century before the time of Luther, and was quenched in seas of blood. No, no idea where he gets that. I think he got the Africa wrong. Uh, what gave rise to it? The testimonies of John uh, Haas and Jerome of Prague. His followers became known as Hussites. I'm not sure where he gets the uh, the the Africa. You know the province in northwest Africa. Uh, I think he gets that wrong. Um, I guess it would be more northwest Europe. You know, um, if anything. Uh, he referred to the Antichrist as, you know, he maybe he just made a mistake, you know. Uh, he referred to the Antichrist as the enemy of, of the church, not as, a, not as a Jew, a pagan, or a Turk, a Muslim. There we go with the Mohammedan, but as a false confessor of the name of Christ. So, uh, yeah. Surely even at this day is a malice, the abomination and filthiness of Antichrist revealed in the poop. The poop is da, 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 the, true, sure, the true Antichrist, of whom it is written that he sitteth in the temple of God among the people where Christ is worshipped. Um, I think actually there's a possibility that in the future that the Antichrist will sit in the temple in Jerusalem and that the idol will also be there. That will be the op absolute, and we, you know, absolute uh, astrocity or absolute, uh, you know, we know that the devil wants to be like God, right? So, you know, do you think Satan maybe wants to sit in the temple of, you know, yeah, I think he would. Anyway. Uh, I trust in God that he will send after me those that shall be more valiant and that are, that are alive at this day that shall make more manifest in the malice of Antichrist and shall give their lives to the, to, to the death for the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Among his dying words he proclaimed in a uh, hundred years, God will raise up a man who calls for reform cannot be suppressed. And the name Haas meant goose, in the, and actually Luther talks about that. And he actually says that Luther talks about him. No, uh, uh, sorry, that Haas is talking about himself, you know, in regards of Luther. Um, that's, that's what Luther says, anyway. Um, the name Haas meant goose uh, in the Bohemian language. 
And he said, This day ye are burning a goose, but from my ashes will arise a swan, which ye will not be able to roast. And Martin Luther talks about that, uh, that Haas was talking about him. So you see the connection. It's very interesting that Luther you know, talks about that. Um, and Luther absolutely was, you know, some, you know, uh, really, uh, he really made a huge blow to the to the Roman Catholic Church, uh, and and it 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 went so forward that that around half of Europe, you know, uh, protested against the Antichrist, and they all knew who the Antichrist was. Although, you know, of course, there was conflicts uh, here and there and all that. And Martin Luther wasn't perfect either. You know, it's hard to find anyone perfect, you know. Everybody have issues. Even the Anabaptists have their own issues, I think. Uh, but the Anabaptist was absolutely the closest. But to this very day, it seems like the Anabaptists are still keeping the festivals of Rome instead of the biblical festivals. It's like 500 years to correct things, and yet we uh, and we can thank Paul for that, you know? Um, Paul ruined so much. Um, and that's, as I perceive Paul, he's the first, he pretty much is the first poop uh, around, uh, you know, that begins to uh, corrupt and, uh, you know, shows the poisonous Daniel. Um... And he comes in the name of Christ, but he, he's the, I think he's the first, yeah, pretty much Antichrist. Um, so, but that, you, you won't, won't get popular uh, saying that. And uh, that's not, you know, the thing is, there's a lot of truth in the, you know, he's a great testimony for Jesus Christ and all that. But you also have to be looking at where he's actually leading people. And Paul is leading people into lawlessness and many of the churches will just pull up Paul you know, if you say something and, you know, um, they will just pull a pole for you. So, uh, against you. Uh, I've experienced it again and again and again, you know, about people pulling a pole, you know. Anyway, so he was condemned as a heretic by the Catholic Church and was burned to death by a bonfire made up of his books on July the 6th. Uh, 1415, he died singing to the Lord. His ashes were gathered and cast into the nearby Rhine River. What is this? No, no, wait, wait, I think. Uh, they, I think this is, no, no, no. They, uh, you know, there are some, some fallacies here, it seems. Um, he was condemned as a heretic. Let's see. Uh, so let's see. Almost exactly 100 years later in 1517, Martin, no, no, that's us target totally. Okay. The name Haas mean goose in the bohemian language and he said this day you're burning a goose but from my ashes will arise a swan um which ye will not be able to roast almost exactly 100 years later in 1517 martin luther nailed his famous 95 theses of contention a list of 95 issues of heretical theology and crimes of the roman catholic church onto the church door of, of ed Wittingburg. the prophecy of john haas had come true he was condemned as a heretic by the Catholic Church and was burned to death by a bonfire made by his books on July 6, 1415. He died singing to the Lord. Uh, I think uh, his ashes were gathered and cast into the nearby Rhine River. Now, I think that that would be Wycliffe where it was cast into the Rhine River. If Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, they, I, I don't know. I At least... Uh, maybe maybe they're right. I don't know. Maybe he's right. I I'm not, I, I don't know. You know. But as far I, I would think it would be. I can't remember what the river was called in regards to White Cliff. Anyway, he might be correct. I, I I'm I'm I'm, in, uh, I'm I'm uncertain on that because I, I know that White Cliff's ashes was cast into the you know the river. Um, but I I thought that would would actually have been. But maybe maybe Haas was also cast into a river. Um, that might be correct. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Jerome of Prague was burned at the stake for his testimony against the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, there we go with Jerome. So uh, that was the other guy, as I understand it, that was burned with, with Haas. Uh, well, actually, it seems like he was burned a year later. Uh, Jerome of Prague was a sick. I'm not sure how to say that. I mean, maybe we should look it up because, you know, sometimes you... Um, Check. Shack. Shack. Okay. Shack. Shack. So he was a Shack church reformer and one of the chief followers of Jan Haas. 
Oh yeah, uh, who was burned for heresy at the Council of Constance? Okay, so he was okay. So he was burned afterwards. The Roman Catholic Church accused him of the following: one, one that he was a derider of the pupal dignity; uh, two, an opposer of the pope; three, an enemy to the cardinals; four, a persecutor of the prelates; five, a hater of the Christian religion. Yeah, well, uh, a hater of the Roman Catholic religion, maybe. But anyway, so he was also apparently burned for heresy, uh, and. Then we, we have the Hussites and we have all the Crusades against the Hussites. So we have Crusades against the Albigensians, the cru Crusades against the Waldensians. We have Crusades against the Hussites. Uh, we have a Crusade in England against the English Christians in the 6th century. You know, we have, cru you know, well, I guess it wouldn't have been deemed a Crusade at that point, but uh, the Saxons... You know, the Saxons, Roman Catholics that have been converted to Roman Catholicism ended up, you know, killing off the, the Christians in England. And I guess we might not have much information on that. Uh, I, I haven't looked into it, how much information we actually do have on it, but uh, probably lost a lot of information on, on these people as well. But they protested Roman Catholicism as well. You see the same thing in regards of India, where Christianity also came quickly too. But you see the Romanizers coming over there and beginning to infiltrate and, um, and do the wicked deeds. You know, there's pretty much nowhere where, where we can find the Roman Catholic insanity institution doing its wicked works. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a perfect tool. It's the most perfect tool for Satan to attack the, the Christianity with. That's Romanism. Um, and he used it from the very, very early on. It's also an interesting thing. I read that every Roman citizen needed to be a worshiper of or, or part of the mystery religion of Rome. If that is true, then, then Roman Pharisee Paulus would have known about, you know, about that. And thereby, he would probably have been a perfect tool to begin to mix into uh, into uh, the Christian faith a lot of uh, issues. Anyway, uh, Satan uses some of the most clever people out there, most educated and clever people out there. But that's not to say that they are, you know, leading you in the right direction. A lot of people in our days leads people back to the Antichrist. You can just see the Protestants have no idea. The proclaimed Protestants in our days don't even know who they're protesting, you know? They're not Protestants, you know? They proclaim themselves Protestants in name, but that's pretty much how far it goes, you know? They don't even know what it means. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it meant that a Protestant is someone protesting, you know? Like, okay, so who are we protesting? Oh, we're just protesting. So what? The, who are we protesting? Oh, the Antichrist. Oh, so where's the Antichrist? Oh, well, the poop. <laughs> you know, uh, it's just, it's insane. You know, uh, it's insane. Uh, it's like incredible. Um, it could actually be interesting to go around and interview people in regards to Protestants, huh? so proclaim Protestants and ask them, you know, because you get so many weird ideas from uh you know, if I could fix some questions, and that you know, would be very interesting. Um, so in going to the place of execution, he uh, sang several hymns. And when he came to the spot, uh, which was the same uh, where Hoss had been, had been burned, he kne kneeled down and prayed fervently. He embraced the stake with uh, great cheerfulness. And when they went behind him to set fire to the faggots, that's in regards to the fire fuel for the, for the, uh, he said, come here and kindle it before my eyes. For if I had been afraid of it, I had not come to this place. The fire being kindled, he sang a hymn, but was soon interrupted by the flames. And the last words he was heard to say these, this soul in flame, I offer Christ to thee. Oh, uh, this soul in flames, I offer Christ to thee. So, uh, so he was martyred, you know, it's incredible how these people, you know, they're just burned at the stake and John Paul, Paul Way rightly and truly pronounced the Pope the, as Antichrist. John 1354 to 1428 was also closed, associated, 
of John Wycliffe published a commentary on the Apocalypse in 1490 uh, based on Wycliffe's sermons. Actually, that would be interesting to maybe look into at some point. Um, uh oh, let's see, cancel. Let's see if we can get a picture here. There we go. Uh, over 100 years later, a copy of this book came into the hands of Martin Luther who was so impressed by it that he reprinted it in Wittenberg in 1528, describing it as a commentary on the Apocalypse written 100 years ago. Oh, that's interesting. That'll be interesting. Um, let's see here. Let's take that. Um, that might be an interesting look. Oh, oh okay. Let's see here. Uh, Purvis. Uh, let's see here. Uh, So apparently that's another John. I don't know if he's called John. Purvis commentary in Apocalypse, Apocalypse uh, commentary on the, on the Apocalypse was pre prefaced by this impressive statement by Martin Luther. This pre prefaced noble reader you may understand was written by us for this reason, that we might make known to the world that we are not the first to in interpret the papacy as the kingdom of Antichrist. For many years prior to us, so many and so great men, great men whose number is large and their memory eternal, have attempted this to so clearly and openly, and that with great spirit and force, that those who were driven by the fury of the pubal tyranny into the farthest boundaries of the earth, and suffering the most atrocities, tortures, nevertheless bravely and faithfully persisted in the confession of the truth. Although we in this age are far more learned and free than they, yet we ought to be ashamed that they held in we ought to be ashamed that they, held in great barbarity and captivity, were so much braver and bolder than we in spirit and fortitude. Mm. Let's, let's have this. John Povey. Okay, so he's called John Povey. I don't know if he's maybe was ma na named Jan. Um, let's see, and let's take this. For as this author was for, this, for his age, as I think, among the first who... Uh, who sought learning and holiness most ardently, yet hindered by the defectiveness of the time and the reign of darkness, could neither speak these things so purely nor think so clearly as in this our age we speak, as in this our age we speak and think, yet he rightly and truly pronounced the poop Antichrist as he is. A witness indeed foreordained by God to confirm our doctrine. From PFF, volume 2, page uh, 24 to 25 uh, anyway um so uh what was it i had something i was thinking about but um yeah so that there's always been people around but, but it is it is interesting how well as i understand it luther actually uh began to understand the uh papacy as the antichrist by reading the book of daniel and the book of revelation you see first luther thought the book of revelation was nonsense as i understand he apparently read that first and then he began to read the book of Daniel, and then he began to understand that uh, it wasn't really nonsense. It was actually, and, and he began to figure out that, uh, um, you know, who the Antichrist was. Uh, so it took him some time to figure it out, as, as it does everybody, you know, including myself. It took me some time to figure out, uh, so... And, you, you, know, lead, you know, there's uh, people out there trying to lead you astray and all that. Uh, here we have William Tyndale. He was the one translating the Greek uh, New Testament into English in regards to the common language. And they burned his books and they persecuted and so forth. And, you know, um, William Tyndale had to flee uh, England. to uh, so, But he they caught him and he was taken back to England and he was burned as a heretic, you know. So William Tyndale said the Pope is the Antichrist and his doct doctrine sprung of the devil. William Tyndale, 1493 to 1536, was an English scholar. He also had to remember that, yeah, Luther is the big guy in regards to standing against this system, right? But we also have to remember there was other people out there uh, doing a lot of things as well. Um, so, uh, so William Tyndale, 1493 to 1536, was an English scholar. You know, Martin Luther died 1540. 40. Six, I think it is. 
I think I'm 46. Yeah, 46. Uh, was an English scholar, so he was a you know he did he was he wasn't much. Well, he could have been poisoned. You know, uh, the Jesus uh, was around at that point. They were created, and so he could have been poisoned and 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 died by poison. We don't know, but. Um, uh, that is an option, you know, but of course he was, a, you know, he was drinking a lot of alcohol and all that might not have been the best thing for his health. Uh, seems, seems he was, you know, anyway, but, um, I don't know, but, uh, uh that's a, that's a chance, you know, that he might've been, uh, might've been one of the first things that the Jesuits were, uh, giving as a task. I don't know. But anyway, um. Uh, so William Tyndale, 1493 to 1536, was an English scholar who became a leading figure in Protestant Reformation in the years leading up to his execution. Tyndale translated the Greek Bible into English, but the Roman Catholic Church fought against him uh, publishing it. Uh, the Catholic Church believed that only the Mother Church is able to rightly interpret the Bible. During a dinner meeting among the priests and bishops where Tyndale was present, he said that he defied the Pope and all his laws and vowed that a plow boy would know more of the scriptures than they. Tyndale said that the Pope, the Pope's forbidding, the Pope's forbidding matrimony and to eat meat uh, created of God for man's use, which is devilish doctrine by Paul's prophecy, uh, they have this thing that you are not allowed to eat meat specific days and specific times in regards of 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 these you know these man made uh, laws. Of course, if you paid the poop, you know you might make a deal with him in regards of being allowed to do it as long as you have your you know as long as you pay the poop a good amount, right? Anyway, then you can get uh, a Passover for that, you know, according to uh, the nonsense. But anyway, that uh, our token's good enough that he is the right Antichrist and his doctrine sprung of the devils. First Timothy 4, 1 to 3, Tyndale, an answer to Sir Thomas More's dialogue in works, volume 3, page, or page 3, maybe, yeah. I don't know, volume 3, P. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, um... So, but yeah, uh, that's also one of the things, you know, when you get into Paul's letters, they, you know, they usually lead into total lawlessness. You can find huge amount of people that thinks the law of God is abolished. So, but, you know, it's, but how can that be true if the little horn thinks to change times and laws? It doesn't make any sense, you know. It thinks to change times and laws. Well, it thinks to change times and laws maybe because the law of God is still you know, active. Anyway, the Jews look for Christ, and he is uh, he has come 50, 15, 15, yeah. The Jews look for Christ, and he's come fifteen fifteen hundred years ago. And they not aware we also have looked for Antichrist, and he has reigned as long, and we are not aware, and that because either of us look carnally for him, okay, he has reigned as long. So we also have looked for Antichrist, for he has reigned as long, and we not aware. And that because either of us look carnally for him and not in the place where we ought to have sought, the Jews had found Christ verily if they had sought him in the law and the prophets, whither Christ sended them to seek. Uh, John 5, no, yeah, 5. We also had spied out Antichrist long ago if we had looked into the doctrine of Christ and his apostles, where because the beast sees himself now, to be sought for, he roars, or something like that. It's a little hard to read. Uh, IP page 46. Tyndale was caused, caught, arrested, tried, and sentenced to death. While he was being tied at the stake, Tyndale prayed that the eyes of the king should, would be opened. Here is Tyndale, uh, here's William Tyndale tied to the stake to give his life of what he preached. After his death, the circulation of the English Bible providentially found its way into the king, uh, hands of King Henry VIII. In seeing the masterful work done, Henry issued an edict that every church was to have one of these Bibles on display in the chapel. chapel. Henry did make one adjustment to the Bible, and that was the insertion of the heater, which pronounced him the defender of the faith on the title page, Tyndale's Prayer Was Heard. So that's pretty much it. Uh, click here to read the historical witnesses against Antichrist study, study, which shows many more quotes from the popes of Rome, which were which were real while the uh, saints protested.
against them. Anyway, so my nose is pretty much uh, getting closed up, so I have a harder time uh, talking. Uh, but that's that's the article um, showing some. Of, and the thing is, it just goes on and on and on. It's it's just if you really look for it uh, and begin to hit the, it's like pinching a hole in the wall and then then like a like a dam you know if you punch a little hole in the dam it begins to break you know it begins to flood out with water and that begins to become bigger and bigger and it really takes that's a it's a huge when you first begin to prick prick the hole in the wall and water begins to come fuss out of it it just begin you know it just comes at you like a you know just totally break the, the wall just breaks down and and there's a flood just coming at you streaming at you with information you know there's so much out there you know uh and there's so much of it again and again and again it just continues um uh, and uh, there you go and as you can see on the top right that's the cookie jesus of the roman catholics uh the false cookie jesus the sun worship bullshit. You see, the father makes the cookie, you know. And of course, we have the Mary, who is what? The mother, right? And as far as I can see from paganism, you have this union. And then you make the sun, which is the cookie, the sun god. So you have the father, which, which, which represents the moon. You have, the, you have Mary representing the, the Venus and regards to queen of heaven. And, and, you know, the thing is, the Catholics can't, can't have God if they don't have a priest. In regards of the Roman Catholic, satanic, pagan, bullshit organization, you have to have a priest. Because if you don't have a priest, you can't make the cookie, you know. So you need the father, so you can get the union, as I see it, with the mother, which produces the sun cookie. Yeah, the S-U-N cookie. Anyway, uh, that took me a long time to figure out, you know. I really had to dig into uh, a lot of things. Um, and I just couldn't get it, you know. I couldn't, but then, oh, and it's, you know, the father in the churches, uh, so-called fathers, are uh, evaluated, you know, uh, evaluate, evalu you know, you know, push for the Mary thing is just totally evaluated, and the cookie is uh, just that makes total sense, you know. Of course, you see the symbols as well; they're just hidden in front of your eyes here and there. Uh, anyway, I guess that's all. May Jehovah be with you. Yeshua be a most precious pearl, and the spirit of truth be in us all. I'm going off here and uploading it. It pro probably again won't be so popular as usual. I don't know how to get out to people because people are not interested in the truth anymore. So.